Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. Dare to Dream has been nominated for Two People's Choice Podcast Awards for a Webby Award. We are listed in Welp Magazine as one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year. And recently, Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger won the Coalition of Coalition of Visionary Resources Award for Best Radio and Podcast Show. Thank you for being on this journey with me, and thank you for all your beautiful comments. I read them all. Today, and a little bit later, I'm going to have someone here from Singapore. She's with us. It's bright and early for her, and it's Feng Shui Master, Cla Master Clarice Chan. She is a well-known practitioner in Feng Shui, and the metaphysical fields of Chinese astrology, space cleansing, numerology, tarot, reiki, and pet animal healing and communication. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. They do energy work out into the world. So if you would like to become a facilitator or take one of their courses online, or globally, go to Dr. Dane here, H E E R dot com or accessconsciousness.com. I'm Debbie Dashinger. I teach entrepreneurs, business owners, coaches, and speakers the time effective steps to write a highly engaging book. I've got private sessions with clients as well as an ongoing book writing group, and I turn author's books into a guaranteed international bestseller. And finally, I show you how to be interviewed on radio and podcasts and get massive results. And to that end, I am opening up my five-day challenge coming up. My five-day challenge is the five-day podcast interview challenge. It's exciting. I did it earlier this year to great success. So many people sign up and folks are signing up for this right now. If you would like to join the challenge from anywhere in the world, five days only, you can do anything. Go to debbyd.net slash challenge. It's d-e-b-b-i-d.net slash challenge. And you will figure out how to get a yes to get booked on the show, exactly what to prepare to give the host or the platform, what to do while you're on the show, how to get coached to know how to be brilliant while you're on air, how to repurpose your show and grow relationship with influencers, and then how to use the show for massive results such as filling your workshops, selling your books, increasing your database. There are so many ways that radio and podcasts can help you in your visibility. Let me help to show you how. Go to debbyd.net slash challenge. Today, I'm speaking with Master Clarice, who's an inspirational feng shui master blessed with many gifts. Her journey with the tarot began in 1987 when she discovered by chance that she could read the tarot intuitively. In 2001, Clarice took a leap of faith by embarking on a new journey within the metaphysical world of feng shui and divination. Since 2006, she has expanded her work internationally. She's a well-respected feng shui master. And in 2008, she was nominated for Singapore Spirit of Enterprise Award. Master Clarice is also an accomplished writer within the world of Feng Shui. She successfully published the book entitled Feng Shui Gourmet, plus a series of annual books which have been reviewed by Harper's Bazaar, New Sunday Times, New Straits Times, The Finder, and Expat Living. She was named Visionary of the Year, an Irwin Literary Award, and is listed as one of 2021's Best Seven Psychics in Singapore by SingaporeBest.com. Master Clarice has contributed to a multitude of major magazines, as well as many radio and podcast interviews. You can learn more about her at Master ClariceChan.com. And I welcome Master Clarice to the Dare to Dream show. It is so great to have you. Welcome, welcome. And while she unmutes herself, I'm just going to give you a little preview of her book, which I have read, Master Clarice Chan's Guide to 2023, some of which we will be speaking about today. So welcome to the show. Thank you, Debbie. 
I have, I'm new to myself, so I'm good now. <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you for the wonderful um, bio that you have um, prepared for me. Yes, it's an honor and pleasure. Researching you was really fascinating stuff. From my understanding, Master Clarice, we'll talk about Feng Shui right here at the top. So Feng okay. Shui, I understand it. I've had places where I've lived done, if you will, had a Feng Shui master come in. So for folks who have heard it, aren't sure, it is the chi my understanding, Chinese art and practice of positioning things in order to bring about harmony within all areas of space. And so the intent of Feng Shui, if I understand it, is to bring harmony to the environment and the home and in doing so to the person. Is that accurate? Um, yes and no. <laughs> okay. okay. So um, Feng Shui is more than just um, arranging your furniture how your house was built, how it was designed, hmm. and the land environment surrounding uh, the home uh, is very important because the chi comes from your outer universe into your house. Therefore, um, how the house is designed becomes uh, one of the vital points. But you are right. You are arranging the furniture, uh, customizing it to the way um, your personal feng shui requires and your colors, the ornaments, they are all very important in feng shui. And yes, it brings about harmony, but it's more than just harmony. You can have uh, good health if you um, if your place or you're sleeping in um, a room that uh, promotes uh, your health. Um, re relationship. Um, success, um, money, that's all covered by feng shui. Excellent. And so this is not a one and done. If you came to my home, how you would feng shui it would be indigenous to me. But if you yes, went to someone, right. right? So it's the home plus me or me and my partner, and that could complicate things because you'd have to work for both people or whomever's in the home, but it would be completely different than for somebody else. Is that, that is right? Correct. Yes. Because when I come to your house and I do a song show for you, um, I have to look at all members of the family. Right. And um, yes, it's a little bit complicated, but within the home, there are sectors that represent um, say, the man, the woman, the children, uh, parents. Um, you have um, an area that represents wealth and prosperity and relationship, so on and so forth. So um, I have to work all that together so that it is in harmony with you and your family member. Right. And Feng Shui changes annually, doesn't it? How does that influence us? <laughs> okay. Um, annually, because I, I practice, is a school of feng shui known as flying stars mm -hmm. so um, that changes every year so maybe on one year you could have prosperity star in, in your main entrance which is desired or in the, your living room but maybe on another year they can be um, like a let's say just say an illness star then we need to remedy that so that you can continually enjoy um the better side of the feng shui. Mm. So if we do not uh, remedy the star, then you can find that you're walking along, you're going along, you're doing fine, and suddenly you you hit a year that's like, why is everything not working out for me? Why am I not doing as well? Why is why am I having problem with my relationships? So the stars that are that change every year, it's going to reside in your premises for a year, so it affects you. And it changed the dynamics of your feng shui. So a question for you. I read this quote, yes. which is, when we throw out the physical clutter, we clear our minds. When we throw out the mental clutter, we clear our souls. I love that. And I have right. to, with transparency, admit to you that my partner and I are in a band. I sing, he plays guitar. We do gigs, we do sound healings and meditations for groups. So what that means is our living room is a living room, but it is also <laughs> our place of rehearsal. So right. 
it's clutter. It's fun clutter, but we have instruments there. We have speakers. We have everything that we need for the band, all sorts of equipment. It's not clutter free. So do you have any advice? Because there's really no other place to put this and we're constantly using it. So we like it to be available to us. Okay. Clutter in feng shui means things that are not useful to you. Mm. We're talking about old newspapers and magazines that are piled up in a place. You are talking about, you know, objects that you are using every day. And so you're talking in being musicians, you're going to have lots of musical instruments around. So I would say that as long as they are placed tidily, it's fine. It's oh, not like you have to clear them all out to have, um, you know, like a, a neat and clean, uh, like instrument free um, living room. You don't have to do that. Well, obviously it would be good if you can put them all on one side. But if it cannot be done, then they have to be uh, put, um, you have, they have to be placed um, like neatly so that it doesn't interfere with the energy flow of your space. Does that answer the question? It really answers the question. And I am i didn't expect that. And I'm thrilled to hear you say that. <laughs> yes. So what I hear you saying is there's a difference. Clutter in your explanation is it's not being used, but it's taking up energy and space, right? Yes, that's right. And also you described it, it could be a pile of letters or a pile of mail or a pile of old magazines or old books or what else is clutter that people aren't aware of? Um, what else is clutter? Anything that is not used really and is people, some people are hoarders. They just like to collect things and then they just continue to collect and the more pots you collect, you continue to add it on. I had a friend uh, that moved back to England and she was saying that she was feeling really down. She was feeling depressed all the time and she was living in this rather big house and I asked her, have you unpacked yet? And she said, "Uh, some of it. I said, can you tell me what's in your southwest corner? And she was telling, she looked at it and she said, oh, I have all my boxes there. I haven't unpacked them for months. And I said, well, maybe you like to move them, unpack them, you know, tidy the space because the Southwest represents, you know, the, the woman, um, the female, you know, um, owner, a female dweller of the house or the mother. Um, and it needs to be, you know, neat and pretty up and if you like to have you know have more um for better relationship for more harmony you need to move the boxes otherwise you're going to feel down you know most of the time so she did and then she told me that she feel much back much better that's beautiful and what a good friend you are (laughs) (laughs) that's that's pretty cool that you can even tap into that you know, you mentioned love. So then I take it that there's an area of a house or an apartment condo, wherever someone's Mm -hmm. living, that for them would be the love relationship area. Is that correct? Uh, Yes. Generically, there are some, that there is a space and that was the space I was talking about, the the Southwest of the living room. Let's just use one room because, um, because if you use the whole house, then you know, it could be at the back or it could be at the front. But let's just use the living room because that's where you hang out most. You know, you, you have the most activity. And also the southwest corner of your room, for example. Um, then it's good to beautify that area um, to, so that you can improve your relationship or have better harmony with your partner. And are there specific things to beautify it with that you recommend? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, the southwest corner actually um, belongs to the earth elements, and so you can. I mean, a lot of people put like um, pink crystal because uh, the pink crystal we're talking about rose quartz that is connected to the heart chakra. 
So, and they like things in pairs, ornaments in pairs, and then also photograph of two people having a good time. It amplifies. Photographs are very important, I feel. If you actually put out a photograph uh, of yourself and in that corner or in, the, uh, in that area, if every picture you put there is just of yourself, it's unlikely that you'll find a partner. So you'd be good uh, if you want a relationship or to improve the relationship to put pictures up that are of yourself and your partner mm. and your friends, you know, so that you can have, um, it can amplify the energy and magnetize um, what you desire. And what about people who are buying a house? Can you offer tips to folks who are buying um, a Yes, I do. In fact, in my book, um, I wrote... Um, there's a, a page dedicated to what you should look out for uh, when you are buying a house or uh, an apartment. Give us some tips, what we should look Give for. you some tips. Okay. Like, um, so we're talking about a house. We, traditionally, we do not buy a house that is directly facing a junction. So it's like a T-junction, a Y-junction, or a crossroad. There's just too much energy coming at you or going away from you. So it can attract what you don't want or it can drain um, what, what you already have. Um, like in a corner, like a dead end, so to speak, uh, because then most of the time you get the energy does not reach there. So you have a stagnant corner. So that house, you know, tend to be... Uh, in terms of feng shui, tend to be less desired. Um, what else can I say? Ask me a couple of questions. Yeah, sure. Um, what about pe people who are selecting an apartment or a condo to rent or to buy? What do you recommend that they look for that's beneficial? Okay. Um, you would prefer that we have a regular shape apartment, whether you buy or you rent. You know, no triangle shape, no missing corners. Sometimes they're in the shape of an L and um, the energy just doesn't flow properly. But of course, if you have a house, then sometimes you, you, you do have different areas of the house. That's fine because that's the whole piece of land is yours. And then, of course, the next thing we look at is uh, if you're going to just rent the house for one year or two years, then you look at what are the prosperity stars of the time, like in 2023, 24 you have to make sure if you're going to live there for good good year you have to find a home that uh, is has the um, prosperous incoming energy and also um, a home that is bright and um, preferably uh, not with a kitchen or the bathroom in the middle of the house now, that's very important because if you have the bathroom or the kitchen right in the middle of the house, it can cause severe health problems. Severe what problems? Uh, med health, like uh, medical. Interesting. Is that because yeah. things get flushed away, like prosperity, health, and goodness just keep leaving the house? No, the, the center of the home is like the heart of your home. Oh. So it's like your heart. So it's like your Tai Chi and uh, it's supposed to be stable. But when you have the kitchen or the toilet there, uh, the bathroom there, then the house will never be stable because there's constant activity. So there are quite a few um, cases where I've come across with homes with um, more, the more, I mean, in Singapore, we have small apartments, you know, uh, and and some of um, Southeast Asia, um, more so in apartments where you have the bathroom right in the middle of the apartment or the kitchen right in the middle of the apartment, then you find that they, they, they may have health problems like heart, heart disease. So, and, it's, and you find that it's just not comfortable as you live in it. Yeah, things just don't flow. So to avoid all that, I would say, you know, no kitchen, no bathroom in the center of the, the apartment. Okay. And so 
let's say you've already bought the house and we're just listening to you and going, oh no, my kitchen is in the middle. I mean, you walk in living room, dining room, then the kitchen, hallway, bedroom, office, bathroom in the back. So let's say, uh uh-oh, my kitchen is in the middle. What can people do to supersede that? So, because I think this is what Feng Shui does. It has all these elements that help prevent that from happening, that the heart of the house can beat very nicely and healthily. Well, this is going to be very difficult. They have to remodel the house. They have to, you know, um, change the design at least to move like um, the cooking, you know, the cooker, the hob, the cooking part of the, the, the kitchen to, to one side so that it's not sitting right in the middle of the house. Hmm. And so because that's... Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. So, so that, you know, you, um, they do not have the fire burning at the heart of the house. Oh, interesting. So there's no crystals, there's no mirrors, there's nothing that somebody can do to offset that. You can use crystals. You can use, but that will, you know, but um, it's not a blanket uh, remedy. I see. You may, it depends on the people of the home and how much they uh, they use, to, how much they cook, how you know, how often they cook. Got it. You know, or yeah, or you can buy and you can stop if it is if you can't change anything if it is just going to be sitting there then perhaps you can they can buy a uh, a portable type of um, cooker hob to put it to another side of the house because once you have that in the middle of the house it's really difficult to overcome interesting because i'm thinking some people may be very excited to hear you say this because they may love barbecuing It's a big thing here in the United States. So they may say, great, I get to go in the backyard every day and barbecue my food. (laughs) Oh, why not? (laughs) It's it's an option, right? Yes. Yes, that's an option. Yeah. So, you know, there are many ways of cooking these days. So it it, it all depends. But once you have a a kitchen in the middle of the the unit, then it's a little bit more tricky. Mm. Unless you can move the cooking part you know, the, the, the cooker hop to one side. Okay. Yeah. There's Instapots. There's all sorts of great gadgets these days. So yes, this yes. is your book. Right. This is your guide to 2023. I'm sure many people are curious. So what are the things we should know for trade and industry? I know your book outlines this such as metal, wood, fire, water, and earth industries. Um, tell me what should we know? about trade and industry trading when you say trading do you mean the stock market i mean you have i'll need trade and industry i'm I'm sorry i'm yes and industry exactly because yes yes, you delineate all the different careers in here right so um next year the year of the ying water rabbit right predominantly has only water and wood now in the five, in, in the theory of the five uh, elements, they have wood uh, produce fire, fire produce earth, earth produce metal because you from the earth you dig the all the metal, and the metal produce water, and water in turn produce wood. So that's all the five elements. Now next year we only have two pure elements. Sometimes you have a year like this year we have fire, we have water, we have wood, we have earth. That's the young uh, water tiger. But next year, we only have two. So therefore, um, we are missing three elements. So some of that's going to be a bit of an imbalance. Some trades are going to do very well. And some are just not going to do you know, as well. So in my, um, in, my, what you, in my research, I feel that um, metal element an earth element will do uh, well next year. Um, the next one that will do well will be wood element. So um, you're going to ask me, what does this element mean? <laughs> yes, please. 
Okay, water element would be anything belonging to like air and sea transportation. It also can be talk about sales and also um, anything to do with the service industry. Fire element, we talk about uh, the economy, we talk about trading, we talk about the stock market. Now, next year might be a little bit tricky here and there because there's no fire in, uh, in, uh, in the elements of the year. Earth industry, predominantly, you talk about the, um, anything to do with construction and uh, to do with uh, properties. How's the property market in the States right now? Yeah, uh, It's bananas actually, well, with everything going on um, financially around the world, whereas people, uh, there was so much selling, real estate was booming. And now all of a sudden, the interest rates have gone way up. It's becoming uh, yes. much more difficult. Loan interests are very, very high, um, completely different market and very volatile. There's also a mortgage lenders companies that are folding right now, very well-known companies. So I'm paying attention to that. It's not great at this moment. Right. But is it on the rising or, um, or it is kind of like going the other way? It's going the other way. It's going the other way. It was so, rising uh, it for quite some time this year and it was amazing. People were buying and selling like crazy. Now, no. Okay, I think um, even in Singapore, the, the, the property market has rocketed and is continuing yeah. to rocket. So yes, uh, I think there will be a lot of um, for selling, cashing in. Mm. Yeah, but I don't think the market will collapse. Right, I don't think yeah, so. Yeah, I think it will continue. I, I think it will continue to grow for a while. Yeah, so you have... Well, the media industry, yeah, publishing, um, that's all going to be doing, that's all supportive. Beautiful. So it'll be good business for you. <laughs> I feel that. I feel that it's our time. And I think if people didn't realize before, COVID made it abundantly clear that the one yes. thing you could depend on was to be online. And you can do podcast yes. interviews online, radio interviews online, uh, on a landline, all you need is Zoom, Skype, go to meeting, restream, whatever platform people use. And the same with publishing. You can be at home and write a book. You can send it to Amazon, even if you don't want to go through a publisher. You literally don't have to leave home. And I think it's brilliant genius to have visibility at that level. So I'm thrilled to hear you echo that media is going to do very well. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I'm very excited about that too, since I have a book out there. <laughs> exactly. You're in the right industry as well. Yeah. So yeah, for folks, I just want to say I'm following along right now. I know this is a little hard to see, but you know, such it is with Zoom backgrounds. But for those who are watching on YouTube right now, and if you're listening on podcast, join us at youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. And here it is. It's all laid out for you, the many different industries that Master Clarice is describing right now. Okay. So it's interesting because under fire industries, you've got restaurant, cafe, alcohol, oil, gas, firearms, stock shares, gaming, and then it takes a switch. I wouldn't expect film production, energy healing, and entertainment. Wow. Why are those fire? Uh, because that gets people excited. Oh, interesting. It's energy. Yeah, it gets people uh, working. It gets people excited. It gets people, um, you know, it, 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 you know, in the film industry, for example, I mean, you do require fire. Electricity is fire. Oil and gas belongs to, to fire. Energy right. healing, in a way, is fire because it's mm. a form of light. And the sun is fire, so it's a form of light. So F and B, um, you're talking about food and beverages. Predominantly, we're talking about food, but F and B as a whole. Um, then you do use fire to, to, to cook your food. This is true. And you say here the outlook is competitive. 
So what yes. do folks need? Because there's a lot of healers and spiritual folks who listen to this show. What do they right. need to know? What do they need to know? They need to make hay while the sun shines. No. <laughs> make now, hay while um, the sun shines. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because that's going to be high and low in the year. Because, um, but I think they will be all right. Competitive just means that there are a lot more healers out there, a lot more um, filmmaking, a lot more um, other brands coming out. Doesn't mean that it's going to be a bad year. Just mean that probably they have to um, keep uh, keep up with the market, you know, beyond the ball, and um, do you know, and and then make the most of it, really. Yeah, because it says here, it will be helpful to focus on offering good products and services and keep up with the market trends. Realistic pricing and practical profit-taking will help. Yes. That's fascinating. Okay. Well, folks, if you want to know, there's tons in here. If you want to know more, you can get, where can they get the book? Uh, they can get the book uh, at uh, on my website, masterclarisschan.com. And I have a um, online version, which is um, on uh, Amazon. Beautiful. So, um, so that that's but that, that can be also be purchased from my website because I'm in Singapore. Of course, in Singapore is in the bookstores. Uh, and then in America, when I go to Conscious Life Expo, I bring my books with me. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Well, yeah. why don't we go there since you brought that up? You are right. going to be speaking and presenting and have a booth at the Conscious Life Expo sure. February 2023. And for folks who are interested, I have a link so you can get your tickets in the show notes. I go yes. every year and I wouldn't miss it. It's yeah. I, I know one year I had to speak on stage and I had a conflict. I was in Florida speaking and it's a bummer when I miss it because it's the <laughs> highlight of my year. It really is. I get to hear incredible people like you in person. So I highly recommend everybody goes in person. Plus the gabillion vendors that you can buy amazing things from. Some are just getting out in the market. It's phenomenal. So it's February 10th through the 13th, 2023. There'll be a link. So you can either get tickets to go live or to live stream from your home. So tell us, what are you talking about at the event? I will be talking about um, the guide to uh, Feng Shui guide to 2023, basically how to remedy your home um, based on the flying star of next year. So we also have a very big change coming out, which is in 2024, because mm -hmm. the feng shui cycle lasts for 20 years and we are coming to an end of it. So 2024 will be the beginning of what we call a period nine. That's going to change the dynamics of the world because what we are focusing on in the last 20 years and what we will be focusing on in the next 20 years will be completely different. Okay. So the last 20 years, I think a lot of our focus is on business, how to make my, everything that is materialistic. Whereas the next 20 years, um, it's all to do more with the art. They say it's like a mini renaissance. <gasps> so a lot, yeah. <laughs> so a lot more uh, focus on, you know, the way you live, the spirituality of things, how to build a better world. It sounds really wonderful. I'm really looking forward to it. Ooh. So after 2024, that is the Renaissance. That is where the art. That was, yeah, that's the start. Uh, the start. Yeah, that's the start. Yeah. So that lasts for 20, 20 years. Okay. So that, that will be how the world will start to focus in that area, into arts, into spirituality. You know, people will be looking for soul food. Mm, I love that. I'm already in that, so I'm glad the world is catching up. That's going to be awesome. Yeah. I mean, you can you can see, you know, in the last, you know, in in I mean, it doesn't. I mean, when something change, when a circle change, when a cycle change, it doesn't wait till the last day, thirty first of December, twenty twenty three, before it changes. As you move closer to it, you will start mm -hmm. to see the influence. We have a lot of turmoil now. We have a lot of disturbance, but hopefully that you know starts to die down or will die down. Do you see that finances will get better or will they still be unstable for a while? I think they will be unstable for a while. Yeah. 
how long? Um, are you talking about worldwide? I mean, next year is not fantastic, I don't think. But I think the 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 year twenty twenty four is rather dynamic. Hmm. Interesting. So we have because we have um wood dragon year usually is quite dynamic, and then it followed by another wood year, and then it's fire. Actually, from twenty twenty four, we we can see better um we can see better days. It'd be different, but it will be better. Got it. And so how about you personally? How did you get into this? What was your path or your journey that got you all these? You really have a lot of gifts, a lot of services yeah. that you offer people. Were you always doing this? Uh, no, I used to be in the travel industry. I was there for like 17 years, but then one year I got very sick. Hmm. And when I got when I woke up from uh, my surgery, I decided that I don't want this anymore. So I started seeking. I started with uh, Reiki um, healing, and the first day I went for the Reiki seminar. Um, it was like at a holistic show, and I was I met my Reiki master, who is still a very good friend of mine. She lives in England right now, um, and. Um, I told myself that that's what I want to do. I want to be a Reiki master. But of course, before that, I already have been doing the tarot for many years, but mostly just for friends. But it wasn't until I started uh, training as a Reiki master in the year 2000 uh, that I, you know, um, put my tools together and try to turn it into a profession or a business. So I didn't do everything all in one go like um, I do. So I, I, I did feng shui a few years later. Uh, when I was sharing a space uh, with my friends, I was just doing tarot. It was a feng shui shop. But uh, I found that I naturally um, has understanding about feng shui. I mean, being Chinese origin, um, I was born in Singapore, but in our everyday life, we do um, use feng shui, even though we do not um, specifically say, oh, that's feng shui. It's just part of our lifestyle. But then it kind of all makes sense. Um, but then more and more people started asking me, you know, um, that, um, you know, I should do feng shui, I should feng shui their house, I do space clearing, so forth. And my friends just say, why don't you just formalize your training mm -hmm. and just go for it? And that's what, I, that's what I did in 2004. And thereafter, it just, feng shui just kind of lead me on. I didn't chase it, it leads me. And that's just more and more demand. So now I do feng shui. Um, of course, from when we feng shui, it comes with Chinese astrology. And then I do the tarot part of it uh, for divination when you have more specific questions. Because with Chinese astrology, uh, it can give you a guideline, an overview of your life, strength and witnesses and cycles. But if you want to know yes and no, then you need divination. And with that, I use uh, the tarot. So it's a little bit of a mix of uh, East and West. But that's what I'm used to and that's what I'm um, good at doing. I, yeah, I have to say that I recently had an experience with tarot, with a right. tarot reading, and it blew my mind. I had no idea the potency. It doesn't mean I haven't had a reading before, but I guess when you have a reading from people who are really good, such as yourself. And I could tell by the way you, you wrote the information on your website, it was the same experience I had had, that you could find personalities, situations. It's almost like you, you're an x-ray machine and you can see through somebody in their life. And it's phenomenal. Oh my gosh, what a tool a tarot reading can be. Yes, it's... Um for myself, even after doing it for like more than 20 years, I still find it fascinating. I did a, a reading for a client recently mm -hmm. and from a rather big uh, company. And she was, she said she's negotiating six business deals, but she don't know the outcome. So I was looking at individual ones for her. 
And f- about four of them were fine, but there were, I came across this one and I said, there's some issue with this particular project that you are bidding for. Hmm. And she said, what kind of issue? I said, I don't know if it is, if it makes sense to you, but it suggested there will be betrayal issues. Mm. And she said, ah, I understand. Because apparently um, that company, the personnel that was represented there was someone they had to let go. Oh, wow. So I see, I didn't know all these. I, I met this lady for the very first time. I said, then you have to be very careful. Mm. that it can turn against you. But so so that was fascinating even for me. <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. It must be so rewarding to you when you say something like that, you're basically doing a blind reading. And right. then somebody comes back and they are verifying the information that you're giving them. That was absolutely my experience. I couldn't believe what this individual knew. I was very moved and I would do it again. So yes, a thousand percent. Um, so I'm curious because you asked me for my information and I'm, I'm I'm an earth earth dog, earth wood dog. Is that correct? No, you, you're an earth dog. I'm going to have to pull up your chart on my iPad. Okay. I've got your birth chart out here. So, um, in Chinese astrology, or what is known as Bazi, or uh, Four Pillars of Destiny, uh, when we uh, look for your personal element, we look at the day you were born, because the year you share with everyone that is in your class, the month you may share with some of your friends, but the day is special to you. Mm. So on the day that you were born, then you belong to the Yingwood element. That's like a, a plant, a flower, a softer element, uh, of the wood energy. So if I look at your screen, you have a vine behind you. So that's so very you, you know, you, you picked that up naturally already. Okay. And I, now, I just want folks to know in case they resonate June 27th. So if you're also at 27th, I don't know if this yeah. will resonate. Okay. Um, okay. Um, it has to be June 27th of the same year. Ah, okay. Got it. Right. Okay. So, so only, so, you are born on a Yingwood day and um, you're born in summer. Mm-hmm. So wood produces fire. So your the energy you channel out is very, very strong. And according to your chart, you have uh, very strong opinions. You're very forthright. Uh, you have a sense of uh, righteousness, <laughs> of what is right, what's wrong. Um, you're a very politically correct person, <laughs> if mm-hmm. I may say. And, um, and so your profession is perfect for you mm. because it requires you to, um, you know, to speak, to, to be out there, to, um, to get a presence and you need that. And interestingly, quite many Yingwood element people are in the filming industry, actors and actresses. Which is what I yeah. started out doing in my life. Yeah. Right. Okay. And so the <clears throat> favorable element to you will be one, uh, because you're born in the summer, you have a lot of um, output energy like earth, uh, like fire and then earth. But at the same time, so that means you tend to work very hard and you can overwork yourself. Mm. So you do need time out. You do need time to plan. You do need time to meditate. You do need time to do your stuff. You'll, you'll take, take your personal time. Even like with your show, you can just do show on and on and on, but you really need to take time out um, to plan and to look at what is in the future for you. Mm. So, But right now, the good thing is ever since 2015, you were in, uh, you've gone into like, what we, we call that the luck cycle and that's different for everyone. Um, yours are start from, it's like every, like I start mine when I was one and other people, uh, depending on when you're born, um, you know, someone else can start at the age of 10. Now for you, you started, <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm it's easier for me to mention the year. You started a brand new cycle in 2015 that will end in 2024. Interesting because that's also a new cycle coming up. Now, you're in the water element right now. 
So um, a lot of opportunities for you. You actually you plan very well at the moment. Actually, you've got you know um you you you've got the patience. You've got um you've got you've you've also got a very strong sense of intuition. I say strong intuition. So and that's been with you ever since um. Like from the time the last cycle, when was that? Two thousand and five. It started when you started feeling more in your element.、Mm. You know, more supported, more protected. You can get what you done,、uh, get what what you want going. So moving forward,、um, you will also you will go into a new cycle in twenty twenty five, and that itself. Will last for another ten years. And moving forward, they are also good cycle for you. So you've got a good run. Excellent. And this next cycle, can you typify it? What it'll be like after twenty twenty four? Now, except for the year twenty twenty four, usually for、uh, it's different、uh, with men and with women, but usually for the women, the year that the year of transition, which is twenty twenty four for you. Um, will be an important year. It is important not to make too much changes that year.、Mm-hmm. It is important to look at what's coming up and give you know take time、uh, to transit over、uh, and see what's in store for you in twenty twenty five. So after twenty twenty five, after you you know you, it, energy will pick up slowly, and then it may take a year or so for you to settle in,、um, and then it will run its own course again. Fascinating,、yeah. but because it is moving in the correct in the positive direction for you, you haven't got too much to worry about. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's beautiful news for me. Thank you. Yeah, and I'm very much. I'm I'm very aware, by the way, of what you said, because I had a whole lifetime of overworking.、Uh, I could go into the night and on the weekends, and and I became so aware. Of the damage that it does. Yes, I got a tremendous amount of work done, and it took me ahead, but at what cost? And so I'm very mindful of my time and my time management, and to always, I definitely have time for myself for sure. Right.、So、thank you. It's always a good reminder. And、yes. so going forward, and thank you for、mm-hmm. my reading. That's All right. Amazing. <clears throat> Are there si- other signs of the zodiac that you want to address? Yes,、um, every year there there are there is a, there are zodiac signs. There are kind of like、uh, in terms of energy, they are in opposition with the ruling sign. For example, twenty twenty two this year is the year of the tiger. Then anybody belonging to the、uh, the zodiac sign of the pig, the tiger. Uh, monkey and snake—they are actually in opposition with the ruling sign. There's a clash. We call we term them as clashing signs. But next year we have a brand new set. So this year you can see that there are a lot of movement. There are a lot of changes because these signs are also termed as the traveling horse, as you can tell from the suddenly all the borders are opened and everybody is like traveling. Traveling has become, you know. Uh, busier than ever. Now next year we've gone into a completely new type of clashing sign. So first we have the rat sign, the horse sign, the rooster sign, and the rabbit sign. But they are known as a star of romance. <clears throat> yeah. So which means that next year, the rabbit year, because it belongs to the romance star, is going to be a relationship friendly year. Yeah. I love so,、hmm? I love hearing. Yes.、That. Yeah. So,、um, then the peach blossom star sign next year, the one that is really representing the star romance, is the star, the sign of the horse.、Hmm. So I think there will be, you know, if you if you have friends who are belonging、uh, to the sign of the horse, you may find that there, you know, there are a lot of、uh, relationship.、Um, Interesting relationship、um, stories that you will hear from them. 
<laughs> and um, now for these signs, I mean, that's the positive side of it. But there's, oh, there's always the tip side of the balance. If handled negatively, it can turn into marital affairs, uh, sex scandals, and unwanted attention. So it is advisable for the clashing signs not to attract too much attention to themselves and also to practice a certain amount of discipline. And this applies to both male or female or any other gender in between. Yeah, because so, with yeah. everything you're talking about, that means you're going to have a lot of drama in your life if you cross over that line. And yes, I just want folks to know, you know, in her book, I mean, it's gorgeous, by the way, it's all color. Thank you. And yeah, it's not even <laughs> matte. I, I do books and I'm like, this is beautiful. Here's me, the dog. And um, it, it gives you a complete breakdown for every one of the Zodiacs that you can look up. And when you say, Clarice, clashing, what, what do you mean exactly by clashing? So in Western astrology, you have opposition. So every, you, you have, uh, every zodiac sign will have its own pairing up, but it also has its own opposition. So it's like an opposition party. It's, it's not good or bad. Mm -hmm. But depend so if you, if you belong to the opposition party, whoever that is in power is the boss. So these signs actually are at the mercy of the, um, the ruling sign. So it is very important that they, I mean, we do advise people the first and most important um, aspect is your personal health and your personal safety. So of course, next year being an emotion, uh, relationship focus year, then it would also to take care of your own relationships. Yeah. So now being, we talk about the dog, that now we have the opposition sign, which is that which are the clashing. We also have the uh, harmonious sign and the dog is the most um, harmonious sign to the year. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. I, news. <laughs> I recently had a book launch and I cracked this joke. If you happen to be a clashing sign, and your spouse or partner belongs to the harmonious sign, perhaps it's not a good year to get rid of them. Ah, that's very <laughs> good. I'm going to use that one in my household. I'm a dog and I'm harmonious, so you, you just hang on to me. Yeah, they need you around. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I to balance up. things up. Yes, yes. Yeah, so there are other... Yes, sorry, you yes. Yeah, I just want to show folks the page. Of course, again, if you listen to the podcast, go to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger so you can see all of this. And this is Lucky Directions for you. And this is all the signs I did dog ear, ha, dog ear, this page. Uh, so, you've, so you can see that. And there is the dog and the rabbit, which is quite fabulous. It's very exciting. Yes, uh, in, in terms of Zodiac, they are like a couple. Amazing. I mean, it's a very... Um, unusual couple it is very unusual isn't it <laughs> yes but um in the zodiac sign that's how they are pair up but there are other signs that are also harmonious like the sign of um, the pig and the sign of the goat and um Yes, those are the two other signs. Yes, that's right. Yeah, and the dog. So total three of them. I mean, they are neutral signs. So it's um, usually, it, it really depends on how uh, your entire birth chart uh, is made up of. If you have more than, if you, if you happen to be born in a red year, um, a rooster month and uh, a rabbit day and then a uh, horse hour, then you have a complete clash in your situation. In, in your chart, yeah. But that doesn't always mean bad. When you have a clashing situation, uh, like a clashing zodiac, it just means that there are external changes that you need to take care of. And you're going to be, I know you're presenting, you mentioned earlier at Conscious Life Expo. Is there anything else? I mean, anything else? I know how much <laughs> it takes to be there the whole week from Friday to Monday, if you're going to do Friday to Monday, Friday to Sunday, to have a booth, to meet with 15,000 people walking through, it's pretty amazing. And to do a talk, are you doing more than your workshop on the astrology? 
Uh, yes. Uh, on Saturday, I'll be at 11 o'clock, I'll be doing the feng, uh, feng Shui for a uh, guide to 2023. But on Sunday at 3 to 5, I'll be on the astrology panel. Oh, fun. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that so that will be very interesting. Uh, yes, because, they, you know, you have a, a set of, of uh, there's a six of us, I believe, and then five of us, uh, five of um, the astrologers are to, uh, West, a different, uh, I think they, they, they're all okay. Western astrologers. And then there's me. <laughs> That's great. So, I think that'll be fascinating because that could be yes. regular Western, Vedic, Bazi, et cetera. So worth yeah. showing up and worth seeing the patterns that evolve between you. Yeah, uh, there won't be any verdict. I think they're, um, they are, um, they mainly really uh, Western astrologers. Um, and then that's just me. <laughs> Good. Yes. We'll meet yeah. your voice. I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the new addition. Love it. Okay. And yeah. I, I want to ask about revitalizing our environment before we end. Okay. Because I know one of the things you do is called space cleansing. Is there an right. effective way to clear old energies in our homes, in our offices, in a building? Are, are there any tips you have for us to revitalize our environment? Okay. Now, um, of course, first thing first, we talk about clearing your clutter. So if it is in the office space, we are talking about piles of paperwork, dead files, so on. It's good to clear them. I mean, I used to go to um, client's office and says, I want 80% clutter off the table. That's been like thrown out. There should only be 20% left. But of course, if you're talking about uh, space cleansing, uh, you, do, you do singing bowls. We can use the singing bowls to do space clear the space. The, uh, the energy of the space but of course by uh, when you're doing that you need to leave all the windows open oh, okay. so you do need to do a form of cleanup before you do the space cleansing otherwise you are cleansing on top of your dirt so to speak got it and may i ask you when you bring that up because that's fascinating to me we have a beautiful huge tibetan gong here i mean the sound is heavenly and we also have double-sided tibetan bowls could we use those instead of the crystal bowls oh uh, yes of course you can yeah any of the bowls that are used for uh, that are um singing bowls mm -hmm. uh you can use gongs yes you can beautiful yeah. and i also have gorgeous chimes uh I don't remember the name of them. They're famous chimes, but they're all different yes. notes and they represent the water, the fire, the air, the earth. And I have those as well. So, yeah, it's important to do the corners of the house or corners of the room. Okay. Uh, just remember the engine energize. You can also energize the space uh, with um, you, by cleansing the space with sage, for example. Mm -hmm. some essential oils if you do orosoma you can use therapy spay it's especially good for space clearing so um every little you know things every little bit helps if you do reiki you can um, at the end of it you can send um you know uh, you can put out um the harmonious energy reiki energy into your space you know and that will help to uplift the space awesome I plan to yeah. do that. Yep. Correct. Good. And so Master Clarice, mm. this is Dare to Dream. What do you yes. next dare to dream? What are your future dreams and goals? Oh, wow. That's going, I want to be able to have a bigger audience in America. How about that? <laughs> Well, what a beautiful place to start with my show. I, I know you've done many shows, but I am so grateful you're here and you delivered you. everything you did today. I'm sure there's people who got so much out of this and may want to follow up with you. I know they go to masterclarissechan.com. You've got an amazing yes. website with all your Thank services. You. And I can't wait to see you at Conscious Life Expo. Yes, I look forward to catching up with you in person. Thank you so much for coming on Thank today. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Debbie. Appreciate Have a good day. It. You as Thank well. You. And I end Namaste. today's show with this quote from Laura Staley. Too many things in too small a space cut off flow, block creativity, and bury beauty. Much like a bad cold can make it hard to breathe. Remove things like this from your space today. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, your weekly Dare to Dream 
podcast with Debbie Dashinger. Leave a comment, share. I read all of them. Next week's show will be featuring the singer, Sarah Hudson. Sarah will be here. She's a light worker, a multi-platinum songwriter, vocal producer, and icon. Sarah Hudson, member of the electro pop band Ultraviolet Sound, is also Kate Hudson's first cousin. Her godparents are Hudson's mom, Goldie Hawn, and Stephen wow. Tyler. Yes. And I, she's amazing. It's so amazing. I'm excited to have that conversation with her and see what she's all about and bring some more light workers to your life. Thank you so much for joining us today. Remember, don't just dare to dream, dare to make all your dreams come true. Clean out that clutter. Physically, emotionally, mentally, emotionally, all mentally, of it. All of it. That's right. Yes. So that you can be so successful. And Master Clarice Chan, thank you again for a beautiful show. Thank you. And see you. Bye now.